All right, here we are. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Steve Bloomfield, and I serve as the manager for recruitment and outreach here at Washtenaw Community College. I want to take the opportunity to welcome all of you and, and let you know how happy uh, we are to have you here this evening. This is actually the fifth in a series of six showcase events that we're running through the month of April. And our focus through this whole month has been to feature our academic divisions, our five academic divisions. And then we've also done a session on online learning. So um, we'll actually, for all of these events that we're doing, we're recording them and they'll be up on the webpage. So if there's other areas you might be interested in, stay tuned for everybody who's attended our sessions. We're gonna make sure that you have links to be able to see other showcases if you're interested. So again, I, I welcome you here this evening. We're really excited to have you for you know, this, this particular session, humanities, our humanities, social and behavioral sciences division. Um, the presentation tonight, we have awesome faculty here. Uh, we have uh, the coordinator for the division, uh, Katie Williams, who's gonna start everything off for you. I, there are a couple things we'd like to do. We're definitely gonna use the chat. Um, one of the things that we wanna do is, is uh, preserve bandwidth. And so in this case, if we can, keep the cameras off, that, that, that can be a big help in terms of the session and, and how smooth it runs. Um, again, using the chat, if you have any questions, it's certainly the way that we're gonna be checking it throughout myself and, and other staff members and faculty for any questions that you have. But then of course, at the end of the sessions, there'll be opportunities uh, for questions as well. And so at this time, I'm actually gonna turn it over to Katie so that she can start off the presentation. And again, we welcome you. Thank you, Steve, and hello, everyone. It is great to see you. Thank you for joining us this evening. Um, we're gonna go ahead and just jump right into it. Um, I just wanted to give you a quick overview of what to expect. Um, today, I'm gonna give you a quick introduction of the different programs in our division. Um, then we're gonna hand it over to our faculty, and we've got um, some wonderful faculty here who are gonna tell you about those programs in a little bit more detail. So we're gonna um, hear from Claire Sparklin, Elizabeth Thoburn, I.B. Remsen, and then we've got two of our division advisors here as well, um, who are gonna talk about two specific degrees that are really geared towards transfer. Um, our division is home to both the liberal arts transfer degree, and then we also offer a general studies degree. Um, and these um, definitely require working with an advisor to kind of tailor your own path and your transfer to four years. So we are so grateful to have our advisors here today. And then our writing center director, Tom Zimmerman, is here to join us to discuss um, publishing opportunities at WCC. Um, so this is just a quick look at our programs in our division um, that we call it the HSB division. So our humanities, social and behavioral sciences division is um, really home. I want you to think of this as like our creativity and communication division. Um, so we offer a variety of two year programs and educational um, or post education certificates. So we have two certificates that are really geared um, for working professionals in the field who want to upscale um, or upskill their current um, roles. So we do have degrees in visual and performing arts. Um, we also have arts management, which is if you're creative looking for um, a more business take on the arts um, and creative industry. We have broadcast media arts, communication, journalism, technical communication. And then we have a pre-education certificate which prepares you to transfer um, to earn your teaching credential with the state of Michigan at a four-year college. We have human services, which is our social work program, addiction studies, which is a cert um, certificate that if you go through this course um, or program, it will also give you the licensure to be an addiction counselor in the state of Michigan. And then, as I mentioned earlier, our liberal arts transfer degree, and then I also want to mention that we have um, English as a second language courses. So if you are an international student or working on your English um, language skills, we have a variety of courses that can support you there. Um, and then I added this link at the bottom of the slide deck. If you go to WCCNet 
edu slash learn slash departments. Um, you can see all of the different areas at the college and then you can browse our programs that way. So that's kind of a handy link if you wanna go through and see what credentials are available. Um, our division contacts, our academic dean is Scott Britton. His email is listed there if you had any questions. He's a great person to reach out to regarding um, our programs or general information. You can also always reach out to myself. Um, again, my name is Kate Williams. I am a coordinator of instructional support. Um, you can email me with any questions. And then if I can't answer them, I can usually get you to the right person who can. And then our awesome advisors um, who are here with us today, their emails are listed here as well. And I will let them introduce themselves in just a moment. Um, so I'm gonna hand it over to Claire to start. Claire, um, you can take it away. Well, hi everyone. My name is Claire Sparklin and I teach communication classes here at WCC. As we're getting ready and used to Zoom, um, you probably notice that all of our faces are crammed over the, to one side. If you'd like to, I invite you to pull the little bar in between our slideshow and our faces. And if you pull that bar over, um, you can actually make our faces bigger and the slides smaller. So get yourself comfortable in the Zoom platform. I'm really glad we're all here. So with communication and media, theater arts, you might be wondering, what are our classes like? What can you expect from one of our classes? So to give you a little bit of an idea, I have some information that I share with my classes. And the information I'm going to share with you today is all about nonverbal communication. So Katie, if you can flip us over to the next slide, there we go. So typically in our classes, we'll start off and you'll hear some information. In this case, I'm gonna to talk to you about nonverbal communication. So nonverbal communication is all of the communication that happens outside of the words that you're saying. So that means the way that we are sending out that message, you know, right now I'm sending out the message through Zoom. I might send the message through the air if you were in the room right here next to me, like my dog is, who you might hear in a little bit. Um, it also includes things like um, the way that you use eye contact. Like right now, you know, the way that I can give you eye contact is I can look into the camera of Zoom. And when you see me looking there, it feels like I'm actually looking at you. Um, we also do facial express expressions. The way that we use our face communicates a lot. Our gestures, um, whether we look nervous with our gestures or if we look calm and cool and relaxed, the way our what our posture says about us and just general body language. So it includes all kinds of things, including like social cues, like how closely you stand to someone if you're having a conversation. Um, if you've ever been in a conversation and someone kind of turns their back to you, you know, that usually means I'm done talking. It's time to move on. You know, just different, different social cues like that. Also kinesics, um, the way that we move our body, the, the distance we have between us. Um, if I'm lecturing to a classroom, I typically stand back. If you can imagine being in my classroom and me coming really close to you as I'm talking, that would feel odd and, and uh, uncomfortable. So the way we use distance communicates a lot. Also our physical environments. If you've ever had a ride from someone, you know, if they say, oh yeah, let's, I'm going to the store too. hop in my car, I'll take you there. That physical environment of their car communicates a lot. Are they neat or are there, are there um, fast food wrappers under your feet that you have to kind of crunch out of the way? Um, appearance, like how we choose to wear our clothes or style our hair or what kind of piercings we have in our body. Also our voice, you know, um, if we speak really fast and really loud or if we're calm and cool. Um, and then also touch, uh, the way that we use touch communicates a lot as well. There's some kind of touch that is totally appropriate in certain situations and some kind of touch that we just don't want to have happen. Again, if we were in the classroom right now and I started coming up to you and like looking at your hair like this, touching your hair and looking how long it was, that would be inappropriate touch. However, if I'm your hairdresser and you come in and I start looking to see, oh yeah, how much do we want to take off today? That's an example of appropriate touch. So all of this nonverbal communication, it 
communicates so much to us. In fact, social scientists argue that nonverbal communication makes up between 70 and 92% of all communication. So like this nonverbal communication is huge. We get so much of our information through it. All right, let's see what's on the next slide there, Katie. Oh yeah. So um, here's an example of nonverbal communication going on. So what, so you can either answer this question by unmuting or feel free to drop it in the chat. Um, so what do you think is happening in this photo? Just taking a look at their nonverbal communication. What do you think is happening? There we go. Uh, Steven mentioned the dad's hanging out with the son watching TV. And E.T. mentioned, it looks like fun. Um, Buyer said, watching TV show with the sun. Yeah, absolutely. Like just by looking at the nonverbals, what's going on, we get to have a, an idea of, of what is happening. That idea of um, Trinity said, a child is being taught how to use the remote. Yeah, Trinity, you picked up on that. It does look like um, the father or who we're assuming might be the father is, is helping him understand like where the buttons are and how it responds to the TV. Um, Kate said it's family time. It's relaxing. Dominique said it's teaching and instruction. Rachel said it's helping. Alex said they're smiling and enjoying time together, watching TV. The father appears to be helping the son. Yeah, like we get so much information from this. I think a lot of us went to the idea that this is father and son. Like we have this idea that this is this is family time. We see that they're in a house um, or a home. Um, it's decorated. Uh, they're sitting on the couch and they have a remote in their hand. Um, so already you've told me what's happening. You have an idea of who the people are. You have an idea of the relationship. And you'll notice a lot of people re reference the emotions or the feelings going on. So you can tell already that this idea of that 70 to 92% of communication comes from the nonverbals. Like we see this happening in this photo. All right, you guys are really good at this. So I think it's time for a game. Oh yeah. So this is nonverbal skills or nah. Um, this is the way we're gonna play nonverbal skills or nah. Um, I'm gonna show you another picture, just like one of the, like the father and son picture using the remote. And this is how we're gonna play. So I'll ask you a specific question. I might ask you what is happening? Who are the people? what is the relationship or what emotions are being communicated? So I'll ask you one of those four questions. When I ask the question, you go ahead and type your response in the chat. But this is the hard part. This is the part my students sometimes mess up. And if you mess it up, we're not going to make fun of you. We're going to like celebrate you and go, oh yeah, I've done that too. The hard part is don't hit enter until I say to, all right? So let's go. Oh, uh, I think we, yeah, here we go. So here's our first photo and I will ask you a question. Remember, you're going to type it in the chat, but you're not going to hit enter until I say so. Um, what is happening in this photo? So what is happening in this photo? And go ahead and type it in the chat, but do not hit enter yet. All right, let's go ahead and hit enter. There we go. Oh my goodness, look at all of these, these um, uh, answers coming into our chat. So we have uh, the woman looks uncomfortable with a man, uh, going over some data or a report on the computer screen. Yeah, we can see the computers there. He's definitely like looking at what's going on and his hand is on her shoulder, but she doesn't look like she likes that. Um, unappreciated physical touching, inappropriate touch. She's annoyed, uncomfortable talking. The guy looks like he's trying to explain something, but the woman, she looks a bit uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. So if we were to observe this, 
we are reading all of this in to this observation just by looking at them. You guys are really good at this. In fact, I think, Katie, I think I've got to give them a prize um, when we get to the end of nonverbal or, or not. Nah. Um, so let's go to the next picture. Let's take a look. Oh my gosh. Okay. So um, here's the question for this one and don't hit enter until I say, but what are the emotions being communicated here? So go ahead and take a moment, type into the chat. What are the emotions being communicated? but don't hit enter yet. All right, go ahead and hit enter. <laughs> there we go. Um, someone said just pain, definitely pain. Um, pain, agony, fear, regret. Um, horrible pain from the tattoo and overexcited by the tattoo artist, um, unbearable pain, expected pain, uh, the suffering, distress, panic. I think, did I just like convince you all not to get tattoos or something? They're, they're so popular though. If you get a tattoo, just maybe bring something to bite down on to, to deal with the pain. All right. How about one last picture here for us, Katie? Here we go. Okay. So, um, Let's go with the question, what is happening? And don't hit enter yet. You're going to type into the chat, what is happening? What do you think is happening here? All right, go ahead and hit enter. Let's see. Oh yeah, uh, chilling or lounging, nothing to say to each other, boredom. They're casually sitting together, but are engaged in their phones. Yeah, so they're not like really engaged with each other, but they're engaged with their phones. Uh, boredom, it looks like two sisters who are home and uninterested in spending time together. Oh my goodness, Alex, yes, that's what it looks like to me too. So it's interesting because Again, 70 to 92% of all communication is nonverbal. But what's interesting about that is nonverbal communication is also the biggest misinterpreted communication device of any kind. So while we have been really good at reading these nonverbal communication signs, social scientists support the idea that nonverbal even though we get most of our communication that way, it's the least reliable. Oh, William said two lazy girls. Yeah, they that can definitely be part of it too. All right, so Katie, let, let's hit the next slide. So you, congratulations, you all have just played nonverbal skills or nah. And let me tell you, you have the nonverbal skills. Let's see that trophy. Here is your trophy and believe it or not, I actually have a prize for you um, and I will explain what it is. But first, I want to talk about um, the different programs that I have in my department. So first of all, um, I teach in communication. And so that means we have a variety of classes in communication. We have uh, interpersonal communication where we learn all about nonverbal skills and the way that they impact others perception of us and how we can get our point across better. Also public speaking, persuasion, oral interpretation. There's all kinds of great communication classes that really build your, your portfolio and your resume to be hired after graduation. We also have faculty with professional experience. Um, I myself, I competed in public speaking before uh, entering the profession of teaching. And I have won many state championships and I was ranked second in the nation. Um, public speaking runs within our faculty. You'll find a lot of people who have uh, done major presentations, also have worked within uh, business and industry, creating all kinds of organizational communication solutions. So the faculty in my department are inspirational. I'm always learning something from them and super happy to go to work with them. And, and my students are great too. All right, the other thing is, um, with communication at WCC, we actually have a three plus one program that 
allows you to take just three years of communication at WCC and then transfer to EMU and complete just one uh, year of education. And that ends up with the total tuition for the bachelor degree at about $23,000. This saves you over $40,000 in in getting your bachelor degree. It is by far the best deal around. Uh, in fact, my son is getting ready to finish up his third year at WCC and he's transferring to EMU. He should be done next year. And it's cost him, it, for him, um, it, he's right at like 22,000 total for the entire bachelor's degree. So it's, it's a great deal. Then we also have broadcast arts in my in my uh, department. This is for radio and oh, excuse me. Um, it's for radio and podcast training. Um, I should have had water near me. <clears throat> Sorry. So what happens in this program is it is very hands on. Students understand the technology behind um, audio and broadcast arts. And then also the techniques. So it combines both this like technical side of broadcast arts and the presentation side. Our students work at radio stations and internships are actually built into this program, which is huge. Um, we know <clears throat> through uh, NACE that having an internship is the difference between on average, making $40,000 after graduation versus making $55,000. So that is huge. All right, then we have film studies. With film studies, there are a variety of classes, everything from horror film to classic film. And our faculty are super experienced. In fact, I was sitting in on one of our classes taught by a faculty member who um, actually studied at Yale and his uh, graduate work was all done at Yale. He had such incredible, interesting ways to analyze movies that I don't know that I'll ever watch a movie without thinking of some of the lecture that he gave. So I, I am inspired by our film studies. And then we also have theater and drama. Um, there are a variety of classes with this. We have a theater appreciation class that makes um, some, of the, some of the requirements with the Michigan transfer agreement. There's also uh, acting classes and improvisational theater. I took the improvisational theater class and it was some of the most fun I have had ever. It was just, every Tuesday night, I could count on laughing my head off and having just an incredible time. So if you're like me and like improv, it's definitely worth checking out. Our faculty member who teaches our theater classes also has professional experience. She's performed and she's taken all kinds of um, different classes all over the United States, really honing her craft to teach. And with theater, there's also that three plus one degree at EMU where you can get a bachelor's degree for $23,000. It saves $42,000. Um, the big thing that I want to stress too is with my department and every department that you're going to hear from tonight, we are very focused on career ready competencies. And what I mean by this, um, whether you're listening to Elizabeth Thoburn talk about humanities or IB talk about art, or you're listening to um, Tom Zimmerman talk about English. Each of us focus on critical thinking and problem solving, oral and written communication, teamwork, collaboration, digital technology, leadership, professionalism and work ethic, career management, and global intercultural fluency. These are the eight competencies that employers want. And so we make sure that every one of our classes, you're going to get gain experience and skill in these competencies. Oh, and the great thing um, in my department and then also the other departments you're going to hear from, we have classes that are on campus. So you, if you like a classroom, you know, come on into campus. We want to see you. We also have virtual. Tonight's event is virtual. And as you can see, virtual is engaging, it's hands-on, and it's a very rich mode. And then we have online classes. If your schedule is jam-packed and you can work when you can work and it's not the same every week, 
then perhaps an online class is the best fit for you. These should be engaging and worthwhile. All right. It's time. It is time for your trophy. Um, so here is the prize that I have for you. So inner, so nonverbal communication, we know that it's up to 92% of all communication, and yet it is so unreliable. Let's take us back to this one photo that we saw. Here we have the picture of the two young women, and they're both staring at their phones. Now, if you were in the room with them and you thought you were getting together to hang out and you saw this, it could make you feel upset. You could see this and interpret this as they don't really care to be in the room with you or they don't want to they don't want to engage with what's going on in the room. So this prize that I have for you, it's called the uh, oh, can you flip to the next slide there? It's called the perception check method. And the perception check method is one of the methods in communication that actually reduces conflict. So if I'm sitting in that room feeling like, why in the world are you both on your phones when I want you to engage with me? I can use the perception method, perception check technique, and it actually avoids a conflict. Instead, it opens up for a conversation. So the first step in the perception check technique is to state an observation without judgment. So I don't need to get mad. I can just observe what's going on. I can say, oh, I see you're both on your phones. All right. The second step then is um, to say two possible explanations of the behavior. So I could say, I'm wondering if there's something important happening online, or maybe you need some help finding some fun things to do here. You know, so it's two possible explanations. There's no judgment in it. It's just offering like, an, like a reason why they're behaving that way. And then you can do the final step is a request for clarification. And that's as simple as saying, what's going on tonight? Or do you want to do something else? You know, that perception check method, it really is a prize because using it helps open the door to communication and it shuts the door to conflict. So I really want to thank you for allowing me to talk about communication, media, and theater arts here at WCC. And there it is. I hope to see you in one of my classes. All right, thank you so much, Claire. Next up, we have Elizabeth Thoburn, or as we call her ET around here. ET, you wanna take it away? Sure, thank you so much. My name is Elizabeth Thoburn, and I'm gonna talk about the humanities very briefly. When I say to people I teach humanities, I often get this very blank, polite look, and I can see the question in their head, what does that even mean? And so I want to elaborate a little bit on what it means and what it hopefully can mean for you when you come to college. To me, it is literally the foundation for any job. And Claire did a beautiful job showing you all the, the um, what did you call that? You had a good name for that. The, the uh, eight, um, Claire, what oh, was The it? competencies. Yeah, those, those competencies, competencies that employers yes. want. Yes, right, the competencies, and we in the humanities plug into all of these competencies as well. So the humanities are the foundation for any job. Um, it is for the love of learning, and what we do in the humanities is we dive in ancient, into ancient cultures, we dive into history, we dive into the world at large, and we're trying to understand what can the Greeks tell us? Or what can people from other religions tell us? And I found this quote by a sage from Mali. If you wish to know who I am, if you wish me to teach you what I know, cease for the while to be what you are and forget what you know. So we have to come with an open mind to take in what others can teach us. And then we often come around and find out how very much alike we think or how very much we can learn from people who seem to be so far and, and so far remote from us and, and what we do. Can we have the next slide, please? So here's just a little bit of a diagram to understand what the humanities are. I often say what I teach is cultural studies. 
And you see that art history, anthropology, language, philosophy, literature, architecture, dance, music, you can expand this diagram, all are the package that makes up, up the uh, humanities. And so I would say the humanities is about the human experience because what sets us apart from animals is that we don't just live our life, we then look back at our life and we, we express ourselves. We show our experience. So art is the visual expression of our experience. Literature is the verbal expression of our experience. Dance is a physical expression of our experience. And so we have all these different ways of of expressing who we are. And in the humanities, we then look back at these expressions and we study them, we analyze them, we learn from them, and we grow, hopefully. So in this day and age, we often are put in front of almost a decision between right brain and left brain. What do you want to do? Do you want to you know, do STEM education or do you want to do the arts? And I will argue that this is really a false premise. Uh, we don't have left or right brain choices. We, they are a duality. They belong together. And we in the humanities are the bridge. And if we look at that next diagram that has its flaws because for some reason math appears twice, but um, the arts and the humanities are in a sense in the middle and we are using we are using things from science and technology and engineering to understand the past and to uh, to analyze our classes. And here I've just listed a few of our classes that we teach in our department. Humanities is just called humanities one, two, and three. That is a historical sequence, um, very close to what you would uh, study in other uh, four-year institutions as art history. We also have art, muse, and music and dance appreciation. We teach world religion, world mythology. Those are particularly popular because they are storytelling and uh, they are very timely uh, in order to understand our current world. We branch out into African-American arts and culture, the arts and culture of Islam. And then we have classes like um, monuments of the world where we literally cover in one semester 12 different cultures through the understanding and the analysis of just one monument. And it is amazing what the Eiffel Tower can tell you about France and its history or what the uh, buried uh, Chinese army, the Terracotta Army of Qin Shi Huang Di can tell us about a whole culture, um, a, a king, an empire, values, cultural values and all. I look at the humanities as teaching 1.0 versus teaching 5.0. Sometimes people, especially young people in the 20th and the 21st century think, well, you just Google it, right? Just Google it. So I will say, okay, that, that now is teaching 1.0. Those are the facts. Facts now are so easily uh, accessible. And I compare that to my days when I got my graduate degree for every little bit of fact, I had to go to the library and sp sometimes spend a whole night to gather the facts that I needed. Today, it's seconds and I can Google them. So in the humanities, we're trying to immerse you in experiences. We are trying to, and you know, we can't always all travel, but I say a humanities class is like a $10,000 travel experience in one semester for just two or $300 and you get it in front of you. So we want you to experience the world. We want you to gain skills such as communication skills, writing skills, analytical skills, uh, learning how to see. And from there you gain knowledge and knowledge isn't just Googling. Knowledge is something that is analyzing, putting it together, making connections and growing. And that is what we often think of as wisdom. And we put that, you know, facts, facts are fine. But to me, facts are just, just the starting points and sometimes even secondary. Uh, facts are good to do all these other uh, skills that we really focus on in the humanities. So the future of the humanities is sometimes hanging by a thread. 
And it is really uh, disheartening for me to see what is happening with STEAM and STEM. STEM is to me is the square. You see engineering, math, technology, and science. It is STEM. But if you look at this monument on, monument on the right side, it is, a, it is a UNESCO World Heritage Monument. It is uh, a, a stupa. A stupa is a Buddhist monument. And you see how the bottom is made up of squares and how, how it ultimately cumul uh, sort of accumulates into uh, a circle and the center point is a circle and that is the actual enlightenment that's the actual wisdom so i think the humanities are a little bit like putting the circle on the square um making it whole making it uh uh making it yeah making it whole and making it something that you can take away as cultural literacy as something that makes you a bigger and uh, more connected person so critical thinking commun communication skills cultural literacy are such important skills and as i said in the beginning they are the base of every job um, not just uh, humanities jobs but every job in the world so I want you to always trust in yourself. In the humanities, you have a chance to explore your potentials. You have a chance to measure yourself against people from the past and other cultures. And so I hope that you will enroll in many, many humanities classes, as many as you can. And I wish you a most wonderful and most successful college journey. And this picture here on the right, I took when I was traveling through Mali, and it reminded me of the saying that you have all heard. When, when people are starving, and, and sometimes we're starving for knowledge, wisdom, and something, you don't give them a fish. You teach them how to fish. And so in the humanities, we teach you how to fish. We teach you how to gain knowledge in a way that will make you satisfied, proud of yourself, and successful in life. So thank you very much. And you have my contact information down here if you want to have uh, you know, any more questions answered or even meet with me on Zoom, I'm happy to connect with you. Thank you. Thank you well, so it's much. It's definitely Edie. not my kind of tea. Thank you. Man, uh, it's too much um, liberal arts for me. I guess I'm just not a liberal arts guy. I... And that's totally fine. But whoever you are, Mr. Bayer, I think. Sorry you know, about think, that. No, 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 no. I, I appreciate your honesty. And I think what is, you know, I will just tell you a little story. Oops, I'll turn on my video again. Um, my typical experience at Washtenaw, where we have so many vocational training classes, is that for, I mean, one semester, it was just a picture I'll never forget. The last row in the classroom were six guys from automotive who all came in with their arms folded and said, okay, we have to be in this class, but we already have a plan. And they told me the plan later. And that was like, they were gonna send in one of their people every class so that the other five could stay home. That person was just gonna take the notes and then they were gonna cruise through the exams. Well, after the first class, they, they figured, you know what? It's not so bad. Um, they came back and actually all six of them stayed the whole semester and at the end of the class they, they told me about their plan that they had planned on rotating and not even being there, but they decided to stay and they even admitted that this was one of the coolest class they had taken on campus. So I think sometimes we come with assumptions, maybe even the idea that we know what something is worth or what it brings us or what it does for us. But I think you have to be in the middle of it to uh, to really judge that. So I hope, Mr. Bayer, that you will come back someday and, and try out one of those classes. Thank you, E.T. That was uh, a very great point. Um, so we are going to hand it over now to I.B. Remsen. I.B., are you ready? Um. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear okay. you. All right. All right. So I'm so inspired by ET's presentation. But what I wanted to talk about was what it's like to interact with the physical world in a creative sense and what that does to your brain. Um, that's what we do in art. Basically, in art, we, we, we deal with things, we create things that are nonverbal. Um, 
we basically reenact um, we reenact the development of the cultural world and the physical cultural world by by actually painting and drawing and manipulating and creating physical stuff um, in 2D and 3D. We are basically reenacting the history of of creativity. And by doing that, you stimulate parts of your brain that are not actually stimulated by verbal communication. They're not actually stimulated by calculating physical problems. You basically are um, experiencing the world in a totally nonverbal way, which in turn reinforces your ability to um, to work in the physical world, to work in the communication world. We have, um, um, next slide, please. We have um, four wonderful studios on campus. We have two drawing and painting studios. Uh, the, the, the studio on the left is one of the examples. And the studio on the right is the very large, extensive ceramic studio um, where we are, basically the largest and the most fully developed ceramic studio in Washtenaw County. Um, uh, our students can explore all kinds of, ex of, of, of expressions in ceramics, but we also move into sculpture and we also move into some of the glaze development. Next slide, please. In 2D, um, our, our excellent facility work in painting, drawing, collage, color theory, um, um, and just perception. Um, doing these drawings help you see what we say in art, what I say in art, Learning art is not learning how to make things. It's learning how to see things. You see things in a way that you never saw them before once you get into an art class. Um, you have to see them in order to be able to draw them, but you also have to see them in order to critique them. Next slide, please. Oops, here we go. So that's drawing and painting and we also have extensive instruction in three dimensional creativity. Um, this slide here, those of you who are uh, strictly engineers, here is a chair that was designed and made to be put together pretty much without glue. Everything fits together like a puzzle. So all of this had to be worked out on paper first. And, the, and all this, all of the, all of the elements had to be designed and shaped so that once, once they were all cut out, the piece went together. Um, the rest of these slides uh, represent um, many areas. This, this piece here is a self-portrait. Um, this piece here is a model for a monument to light and energy. Um, this piece here is a. The woman that made this called this Dancing Earth Mother. Um, and this piece here on the right, um, if I could get this, this is a clay sculpture based on one that this was done about 12 years ago when Detroit was in its worst possible situation. And this clay sculpture was basically a representation of what this guy saw in his old neighborhood. You can't see it, but there's a, one of those police drawings of a body on the sidewalk outside of the building here. And if you look closely, this is basically a derelict building. So our, our, our 2D work um, uh, and 3D work represents the rep, rep, reflects the life of our students. Next slide, please. I think we're done. Here we go. Next slide. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Ivy, for sharing that student work and those pictures of the art studio. Um, our arts um, rooms are really amazingly creative space. So thank you for pointing that out to Claire in the chat. Um, so now we are going to hear from our advisors. Um, and our advisors, these are the people you want to speak with. They could answer um, really mostly all of your questions about applying and transfer and financial aid. Um, and they're gonna tell us a little bit um, specifically about our general education requirements that are housed in our division um, that apply to something called the Michigan Transfer Agreement. And then they're gonna tell us about that liberal arts transfer degree as well. Rachel and Brittany, the floor is yours. All right, thanks, Katie. We always get such a great introduction. Um, so my name is Brittany Middlebrook. I am one of the advisors here at WCC. I'm joined by Rachel Espinoza. We're just two of the advisors here. Um, so there's a whole a whole crew of us over in the student center. Um, our day-to-day -day work really involves working with students throughout the academic experience. So this can be anything from picking out courses, um, schedule planning, also taking a, a broader look at what your academic goals are, what your career goals are, um, understanding the many, many campus resources that you have at WCC, and really helping you to navigate all of these different processes, um, all of these different resources. College can be really confusing to navigate, and so we are here to help you through that experience. Um, each WCC student is, uh, is assigned their own advisor. Um, it's division specific. So we all have different programs that we advise for. In this way, we really get to build a relationship with our students. And um, that's kind of the aim. We want students to feel really comfortable coming to meet with us to talk about classes, talk about their goals. Um, you know, and we want to work with them over the time period that they're here at WCC. Um, sometimes it doesn't always happen if they change their program or something. But um, anyway, that relationship is, is a really big piece and we value that. Uh, next slide, please. I guess I'll have to get that woman's email and just say, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to dish your presentation. <laughs> All right, so then we will talk a little bit about the Michigan Transfer Agreement. And I already saw in the chat that William is already talking about transferring to possibly U of M. And Michigan Transfer Agreement is one of the things that we really focus on with first year students, especially um, because it is, for lack of a better word, an agreement between the two and four year schools in the state of Michigan to allow for not only transferability of courses, but also applicability of those courses into the general education program at the four year or the university. Um, it's 30 credits of coursework that are built in as general education for a lot of our programs that we were talking about earlier. And it is an English class, a speech class, or a second English class, math, natural science, social science, um, humanities and fine arts. So all of those classes, I kind of, when I talk to students about it, I'm like, it's a bundle of classes that you can take with you. And if you transfer somewhere, for example, if you transfer to Eastern, they take that bundle and they say, okay, you're waived from all but one of your general education classes. And really we could build that one class in if we get you into Claire's uh, intercultural communication class. <laughs> um, so this is a really smart way to start your program at Washtenaw and um, people like Brittany and I will make sure that the classes you take will not only transfer but apply to the school where you're interested in transferring. Um, you can go to the next slide and I think Brittany will take over the first part. That's right. Yeah. So within all of the actually all of the associate in arts and all of the associate in science degrees at WCC the the MTA or that 30 credits worth of general education is embedded so that's really nice two of the really popular transfer options um, for which Rachel and I advise are the liberal arts transfer as well as the general studies transfer um, there is an employment pathway and that one we we see as um, better suited for students that are that are looking to enter the workforce um, and not necessarily transfer later on. But the the two that are our big transfer heavy hitters, the liberal arts transfer and the general studies transfer, are basically made up of that thirty credits worth of general education. And then with general studies, students have a lot of flexibility because they have thirty credits worth of electives to play with. And so, like Katie alluded to earlier, sometimes students are 
are embedding um, certificate programs in there. Um, basically, students are working with an advisor to come up with a tailored plan or pathway. You know, it could be um, specific to a certain subject area. Maybe they're going to take, the student's going to take classes toward their future major or minor. Um, the liberal arts transfer is somewhat similar. So you'll have a concentration of liberal arts electives. So, um, you know, areas like uh, dance, drama, foreign languages, psychology, sociology, you know, all kinds of good stuff, as well as 15 open electives. So there's a lot of flexibility. They're really popular transfer options. Um, there's some good transfer guides on WCC's website. So we use those with students all the time um, and kind of figuring out, okay, which classes are going to fit into these elective areas? What's, what's going to be the best um, you know, choices for our students. And I think now Rachel is going to talk on um, like a special kind of a transfer agreement that we have. Yep, I'll bring it back around. So it was great because Claire earlier mentioned the three plus one programs that their department has. These programs are really awesome. <laughs> if you didn't get that already, um, they are very special. Um, signed agreements between the university and Washtenaw. And so for the most part, a lot of these are between us and Eastern, but there are a lot of them on our website. So if you go to our website and take a look, um, you'll find tons of examples of these, but essentially it lays out exactly what you can take at the two-year school. And then when you transfer, you get to take the least number of credits possible at the four-year school. and as Claire was talking about, $23,000 for a bachelor's degree is pretty amazing. Um, and so often you'll hear these called the three plus one. It's called an articulation agreement, if you care about that jargon, right? Um, and it's very, it's just making sure that everything that you take here, not only, like I, I cannot say this, I'm in, enough times, like not only transfers, but also applies to the degree at your four year institution. Uh, and yes, Katie said that social work, they have also an awesome three plus one program. There's a bunch, like I said, those are just a couple of the people that are like with us, right? Um, and I used to actually work at a local four year university. And when students came in with these articulation agreements, they really could finish in sometimes two semesters at the university and it just saved them so much time and money. So um, if you ever have questions about them, we would be more than happy to help, but I'm going to stop and let <laughs> Katie take up, let us know who's coming next. I think it might be Tom. It is Tom. Thank you so much, Rachel um, and Brittany um, going over those um, more like housekeeping transfer credit issues that really mm -hmm. rule um, all of college. So um, I just can't stress enough, Brian, I see in the chat that you're interested in behavioral science. Um, start mm -hmm. reaching out if um, the program's not covered tonight that you're really interested in or you don't see a contact, reach out to Rachel and Brittany. They are great resources and they will be able um, to get you all the information you need. Um, and then Tom, I'm going to head mm -hmm. over to you to talk about the Writing Center and our publishing opportunities here at WCC. Wonderful. Thank you, Katie. It's good to see you all. Nice to be here. Um, great to hear about all these programs and all this transfer stuff. It's cool. I might say um, I, I'm an English teacher here at WCC, and I also direct our Writing Center. And really, this first slide's about the Writing Center. In some ways, I think it dovetails really well with what Rachel and Brittany were talking about regarding transfer. One of, the, one of the main things we do in the Writing Center is obviously look at student writing and some of the most important student writing that you guys will do might be for transfer purposes, wherein you write essays to transfer from WCC to a four-year uh, college or university. And we look at lots of those kinds of uh, writing uh, uh, pieces. We also look at any kind of school work, your, your, any kind of writing school work you have, anything related to, um, to work, resumes we look at all the time. Um, we look at uh, creative writing work. We have people that bring in chapters of novels, poems, um, journals, obviously for class lab reports, research papers, essays, um, just about any kind of writing you can think of, we will look at it. We're happy to look at it. And people bring in all kinds of personal stuff too. So if you are comfortable bringing it in, we are more than happy to look at it. So 
Um, I might add also for if you're a student um, and you've taken our composition one class and gotten an A in it, and almost all of our students take composition one, you saw some of the transfer stuff there before. Um, the, the writing center is also a good place to work. And you see this little inset picture right here, I have here of WCC's writing center. Actually, those three young people you see in the, in the picture there, those guys were all WCC students who worked in our writing center. So it's also a good uh, employment opportunity down the line for you. It's a good student job looks great on your resume and it's really fun. You get to meet and help a lot of students. So, so that's really cool. Um, so that writing center, that, that's, our, that's our kind of online presence. On campus, we also have a big airy room with floor to ceiling windows all along one wall. And um, it's a walk-in space that's a little bit like a noisy library. We, ho we host open mics there. It's got lots of tables. Um, there's always an English teacher on duty there. Um, we have a lot of student tutors that are working there. So anyone can come in. It's a very open sort of thing. It's not, there's no appointment necessary. It's a great big walk-in center, a little bit like a noisy library. But like I said, we host a lot of events there as well. Um, just a few weeks ago, in fact, we, we hosted a, um, a transfer, essay, transfer essay writing workshop where a lot of WCC students came in and got some tips about how to write a good transfer essay. A lot of them are ready to graduate from WCC and go on to a four-year school and they're wondering, okay, how do I write, how do I nail that essay so they'll accept me? So we do a whole bunch of really cool stuff there. We also have a very large online presence on Zoom. We're available right now about 57 hours a week. So um, you can actually go to, if you see the little, um, the little picture of the WCC's writing center in the lower right-hand corner, um, the writing, yeah, writing help on Zoom now, if a student clicks that or if anybody clicks it, they're going to get a Google form which they can fill out, click that, and bam, they will have a live link to our Zoom space where there's going to be an, a WCC English instructor waiting there. So it's a really, really good, uh, really good service for really anyone. Okay, so, um, so we have a big online presence, but we also have a really cool physical uh, presence on campus. So if you don't mind, uh, Katie or whoever's running the slides. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, we also have tons of publishing um, opportunities at WCC. So if you're a creative type, um, if you write fiction or poetry or creative nonfiction, or if you're a photographer or visual artist, um, we have lots of opportunities for you to get your work published. Uh, one of the venues we have is the WCC Poetry Club, um, which is obviously not just limited to poetry. It, it, you know, we, we look at all kinds of creative writing. We also publish a lot of anthologies. You can see here one called Acts of Resilience, another one called One Love. These are our two most recent ones. Actually, we're working on a new one right now. Um, but these, uh, these anthologies publish student work, faculty work. Um, that's a combination of, of poetry, prose, uh, various kinds of artwork. So really anything kind of cool or beautiful that we can reproduce on a page or on a digital screen, right? We're really interested in, um, in, in publishing and getting your work out there. I might add publishing is a great way for you to augment your resume also. You know, if you're trying to, to add some light items to your resume, a few publication credits looks awfully good. So um, this is one of our opportunities is the Poetry Club. Let's flip to the next slide. There we go. We have the Huron River Review, which is sort of our college's um, standard literary magazine. It's won a whole bunch of national and regional awards. I think 54 different awards over the years um, for excellence. And that excellence really comes from our students, the people who submit the stuff, submit the really cool stuff that we're able to publish. Um, during COVID, we've been, we've been a digital magazine just because it's so hard to do print stuff now, but uh, it's traditionally a print publication with a, with a little bit of a web presence. And these are covers of our last two issues. And uh, both of these feature student work. We always feature a student, uh, a student uh, art piece of some kind on the cover. We publish lots and lots of students in this. So again, a really good opportunity for you to, to get published. And let's go to one more slide. We also have a, a magazine through the, through the, um, the writing center this is actually a national magazine, international. People from all over the world submit to this. And I, I hire students to help me um, get, help me uh, edit these and, and select these and also give them a little bit of publishing experience too. Again, during COVID, that's been a little tricky, but we had a pretty cool model wherein I had students helping me out and they had, again, a nice line item on their resume, right? Editorial assistant at, at an international magazine. Um, so these magazines publish uh, writers from all over the world. So again, really cool. We also, occasionally, we've published a couple of WCC folk as well. So um, I think one of our issues, we had writers from six different countries, you know, it represented. So, you know, we're really lucky um, to have that presence. Um, so that, that's another really good opportunity. So um, that's the kind of thing I, I came primarily to talk about with the Writing Center and Creative Opportunities. Um, 
But you know, as some of you already mentioned, I think already we 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 have a couple of programs in the English department. We have a journalism program and a uh, technical writing program. I'm not actively involved in those two. I, I teach Comp One and Shakespeare and do the literary stuff. Um, but if any of you are interested in that, I can certainly get you the right person. Um, and so I'll field any questions or or maybe mercifully shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tom, and I want to say that was awesome. <laughs> I appreciate all of the information on um, publishing. There really are some exciting opportunities, and I do have to say that the faculty and staff in the Writing Center are so helpful, and they are there even if you're not attending WCC, um, it's open yeah. to the community. So you could mm -hmm. submit something tomorrow. Um, yes. So I want to thank <laughs> all of our awesome faculty and advisors for being here today. I'm going to hand it over um, to Dominique in recruitment and outreach. And then I um, will put some additional links in the chat for everyone as well. All right, thank you. Uh, so let me just share my screen briefly. Oh, I didn't realize. Okay, so can you, what can you see on your screen? I'm hoping this one I have. Okay, <laughs> great. Okay, so just briefly, I know we uh, pretty much ran out of time. Thank you all for your great presentations. I learned a lot because um, I've just been working here since November, but I don't want to take too much of you all time. Thank you, students, um, prospective students, for tuning in today. Um, so if anything in the presentation sound of interest to you, or maybe it was a program we didn't get to discuss, I know it was a lot of comments in the chat. I would love to discuss with you your next steps on how you apply for the college. I know William and Mr. Um, Fire um, mentioned this uh, briefly, but I would I can reach out to you and you also my email address is listed here. I'm Dominique Palmer again. Um, so I would love to discuss like the process of applying to the college, setting up your net ID, attending orientation, and just those next steps so that you can attain your next level goals um, and have classes with these lovely professors and you know also meet with our lovely academic advisors. Thank you all for tuning in today. Um, again, that's my email. I feel like I guess I'm I'm not missing anything <laughs> for the most part. I know I got to keep it brief, um, but thank you again. So I'm gonna stop while well, I keep my screen up just in case you want to screenshot this. Um, and I know that Katie said she was gonna put some information in the chat box. And and I'll just jump in real quick uh, to finish up for the evening. Um, I want to thank all the presenters today and definitely thank our visitors for attending the event. As I said earlier. Um, all of these sessions that we're doing through the month of April, um, they've been recorded or are going to be recorded. And so we're, our hope is that for each of the academic divisions, as well as for our online learning program, the, that these sessions will be available to all students, prospective students. We are going to send special links to everybody who's attended our sessions uh, and those who signed up and maybe couldn't make it. Um, so that you can watch anything you'd like from any of our divisions. I know one person had asked a question about web design earlier mm -hmm. on, and of course that falls in a different academic division. Um, but we have, the cool thing is we have information on that and we have a presentation that will connect. Um, and of course, what the person that you just met, Dominique, is the liaison, recruitment liaison uh, for this academic division. She also is for math and science. And so I know a couple of people are interested in learning more information about getting through the enrollment process. And between Dominique and myself, we'd be more than happy to help you out. So I'm going to actually pass it back to Katie one more time. Katie, if you'd like. Sure. Thank you, Steve. Um, so again, yep, Steve and Dominique are um, the people you want to reach out to with enrollment, getting started, all those questions. And I'm here to answer um, any questions you might have um, that's program related. Um, and then I can also get you in touch with faculty if you want to ask them specific um, questions about programs. And our awesome advisors, of course, are um, your contact for anything um, curriculum planning, transfer. Um, so I think between all of us, we've got you covered. Um, and again, thank you so much for being here today. It was really great to see everyone this evening. Have a great evening, everybody. Well, I'm not muted. <laughs> Oh.
We good, Steve? Uh, just a few more people checking out. Bye, Alex. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you, Alex. William, we'll be talking with you, buddy. Got your email. We'll talk to you soon, okay? Steve, I put something in the direct uh, chat to you. Did you see that? Uh, hold on. Let me check. Oh, I I'm sorry. I pushed our time too much. That was me. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Well, I tried to cut down as much as I could. <laughs> I, I couldn't see my timer. And then when I got done, I was like, ooh. I, I think our, our chats in between sessions, I'm sure I cut in by introducing people too, which we didn't really talk about if I was going to do or not. So that probably ate up a couple minutes as well. I just thought it was, it was excellent. What's really awesome about it is everybody had this presentation that we can use on its own, which is great for us um selfishly from an advice or from a, <laughs> a recruitment standpoint it's awesome for us um and uh I, you know elizabeth just uh my two cents i said it to you in the chat thank you so much for how you responded i i think it's great that he said what he said yes you know, like, i thought so too. yeah i thought it worked out well um i don't know if you guys caught this steve but he accidentally unmuted later too and mentioned writing you an apology so i think yeah. that was an accidental yeah. comment i don't think i think he was talking to somebody in his house yeah and you know what i did because i heard that i sent him a direct message that said absolutely no offense taken yeah it's fine this was a, an honest response from the heart and i get that and however i said but I think I, I'm sure you would have a good time in my class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it almost sets up perfectly because, you know, um, just from my own standpoint, I, I went to a small private liberal arts school and my background was in English and journalism. I never thought for a minute, I almost had a major in art history. I ended up loving art history because I took my 100 level art history class and I went all the way, you know, into Islamic, Islamic art and and you know doing stuff in british and and ancient and and you know all those things i never thought i would have been interested in. and i was because i took that first class yeah yeah you know? steve, no but what i said in the oh go ahead oh i was just gonna say steve you could have been an art teacher like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i actually loved it it was great because i'm a huge history buff and you can get so much about the times you're know, talking about it tonight based on yeah. what's produced music and art wise you know Right. But see what Stephen, what I said is like, if you if you have more pointed like things you really want to address, and you know, then we can take the glitches out I'm happy to give that to you, you know, and it could be exactly five minutes or exactly however many minutes you need it, um, rather than sort of clipping and editing out of here. So so just, just happy to work with you on that. Well, and so let me just throw it out this way, folks, let's get the copy back. Right. Let's see what it looks like, and um, yeah, see but, how bad it is to you. Yeah, yeah. How, much you, how much you guys you know like it or or don't like it.